Hi, and welcome to Home Assistant How To with Bearded Thinker. Today we are going to play with another DIY project, and this time it will be Zigbee Watering Station. We'll start in 10 seconds. Before we start today's video, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my YouTube channel. Thank you all for your membership and also thanks to everybody who watched, subscribed or liked my videos. Thank you! If you too want to support the channel, you can do it by clicking the join button below and becoming a YouTube channel member. Thank you! If you have followed my channel, you have seen probably videos about the Hygro Plants board and it allows you to track the humidity, temperature and other sensor data for the plants, potted plants. And this screen is what I currently have from plants added to my home assistant. But the question is, if you have that data, do you also not want to have some automation that would allow you to water the plants? And the goal for today's video is to build such a device. Of course, I'm not that smart and with the help of Alexei, I did find that project on modcom.ru and everything you need to know, such as for example bill of materials, PCB boards, STLs if you have 3D printer, etc. can be found on this page. I did already build one of those boards just for the testing purposes, so this will be my second build of this board. There is a case that you can buy for it. There is also option to print part that goes here to hold the motors and when you're finished, you will have all-in-one Zigbee router that also acts as a water pump to water your plants. Please note, there are a couple of issues with it. And when I say issues, they are not really issues, but will give you a hard time. First of all is sourcing those motors. I so far have two types. One type that I have that fits very nicely into the holder, unfortunately, is air pump. The second pump I have, or six of them I have, are pumps that work with water, but are unfortunately smaller ones. They will work, but the pressure of water of course will be lower. This board also works in pair with DIY Zigbee plant monitor, but so far I haven't built those. Maybe in future I will do that. So you will have integrated device or integrated system for monitoring both plants and releasing water when needed and it can work automatically even when home assistant is down. But you will need some kind of a gateway and for the purpose of this video I will be using Zigbee to MQTT. Well, unfortunately, and this is the second problem. At this point, so far, Zigbee to MQTT doesn't have internal support for it, meaning, yes, the device itself will be added, yes, you will be able to add it to Home Assistant, but the Home Assistant or Zigbee to MQTT will not be sure of what is switch, what is input fill, etc. We will tackle that, at least to make it working in Home Assistant in this video too. And while we are already on the matter of the firmware, yes, there is no ready-made firmware. We will be creating one. So this video may even eventually help you if you want to build your own Zigbee project and you want to know how to build a custom firmware for it. Don't worry, it will not be that hard. If I can do it, anybody can do it. So let's get started. First things first, we need to solder the components on the board. And I will be using hot air gun for all surface mounted components, but they can be soldered on the board with the soldering iron too. Just make sure you have right tip. When I was doing it the first time, and this is the board I did first time, I unfortunately didn't have the tip I should have had. So the soldering was a bit messy. And the second thing you should be aware of is the LEDs. LEDs should not be mounted flush to the surface of the PCB, because as you can see above, the LEDs needs to be a strip for mounting into the case. And yeah. If you cut the legs too short, you will not be able to mount them in a case as they should be mounted. I will be using hot air gun for surface mounting components, as I said, and then I will be using soldering iron for all the through the hole components.
And this is it. I did have a lot of issues with the board and let me show you what was my biggest issue here. The biggest issue was once again the Zigbee module. The problem with the Zigbee module is that you have oriented and positioned it in a such a way that all the pins on the left side and the bottom, if we say that this is a bottom side, align with the white line here, so that only the pins that are necessary are used or mounted or soldered. The problem is that once again the solder went under the board, it made short, so for example all the pins on this side and all the pins on this side were shorted, so yeah. That's the biggest issue for me with soldering with the uh, heat air gun, so I'm still not that good with that one. Buttons, speaker, capacitor, programming pins, pins for the motors, this one that can be used either to detect water leak or uh, if there is no water, and LEDs were mounted from the bottom side. Previously I did mention that you have to be careful on uh, length of the legs. This will go in the mounting box and later on you will have to install this diffuser on top. This one has to match the groove of the box. It goes something like this. So when you are doing this just make sure that the legs for the LEDs are long enough to fit inside this box. Let's talk about motors which I did mention previously. There are two options or two ways to use this board. One is to use the motors and the motors look like this. This one is a water motor and unfortunately it's smaller size. This one is air motor and it's perfect size but it's not for the water. It will work for a short period of time but after some time you will be beginning to see leaks from it. There is a link to the Aliexpress site where they are selling them and I will be posting a link where I bought those motors also in the description of the video. But this board can be used with the solenoid valves. And Per, I'm here looking at you. If you are having a greenhouse and have valves and need much more water than the plants in the pots would need, maybe the best option for you is to avoid the motors completely. Instead of that, use these pins here to attach the relay and use this relay to trigger the solenoid valves on or off. Which means that, for example, when the relay is on, you get the power, power powers the solenoid valve, it opens the water and waters the plants. And when the power is off, which you can also control not just via Zigbee, but also these buttons here, when the power is off, it shuts down the power to the relay, relay shuts down the power to the solenoid valve and the water is off. So as I said, there are two ways to use this board. This one with the relays, unfortunately, is not something that I will be playing with because I do not have any solenoid valves. But this is something that you may look into it if you need it. We've reached the point where we now need to program the board. But for this device, there is no ready-made firmware. So we have to create one. And in order for us to do that, you have to click on the link and go to a site called ptv.info and there download the application. After you download and install the application or run the application, it is only a matter of copying values from this page here to the firmware maker. Okay, I had one mistake here. I didn't tick remember state here. Let's save this. DIY water station. Enter. For the next step, make sure that you plug in your programmer like this. This is where you will be connecting cable to your computer. Ribbon cable goes here, it's plugged like this. Open the Texas Instruments Smart RF programmer and hook up your board to the computer. When you hook it up, it should automatically pop up here. Tick off this box. Select the file we just created, DIY Water Station. And click on Perform Actions. Programming itself doesn't take very long, but the verification of that, it takes a little bit longer. So wait until it finishes. And the last step, of course, is to add it to Home Assistant. And we do that by going to zigbee 2MQTT, selecting Permit Join. And if you have just flashed the firmware, 
the device itself should be in the pairing mode and should be added to Home Assistant very quickly. And the device is now added to our Zigbee network. Unfortunately, at this point, there is no converter available in Zigbee to MQTT. And if you want, you can create your own. I've started working on the custom converter, but unfortunately, at the time of the recording of the video, it's still not finished. When I finish it, it will be available as a link in the description of the video. Let's click on it. And this is the information from our board. We can see the firmware build date, when was the last time it was seen, the device type is router, and this means that this device will extend your network. So it connects to Zigbee network and allows other endpoint devices to connect to it. Before we go any further, let me rename this. Let's press on rename. We will call it water station. And we will also update home assistant entity ID. Let's press save. Now let's see what it exposes. Since there is no custom converter, let me try and explain what button does what. We have L2, L3 and L4. These are the pump buttons or pump switches. If I press the button here, it will turn on on the screen here. But as you can see, also the LED turned on. Same goes for button 2. The LED is on and it's also on here. Button 3. These switches in Home Assistance and buttons on the device itself are synced. So these three here, L2, 3 and 4, are pump 1, pump 2 and pump 3. L5, well, let's hear what this is. It's a buzzer. So you can use the L5, turn it on or off if you want to have a buzzer turn on or off. These are four of the things that we need for integration inside Home Assistant and these are the things that we will be playing with inside Home Assistant to trigger pump to work and pump the water to our plants. In Home Assistant, let's go to Devices, type Water Station and select this device. What we want to do is we want to add a couple of devices to our user interface. Let's rename them. So, Water Station, switch Water Station Two will be pump one, water station pump one. Now we have pump one, pump two, pump three sensor for all those pumps and buzzer. Let's add those to Home Assistant. Overview. Beta, where I keep all the stuff that I'm testing. Edit dashboard. Add card. I will simply be using this one here. Two pumps are hooked up. Let's see if we can hear them. Pump two, pump one, and buzzer. Everything is working. How do you automate this in Home Assistant? If you already have some kind of plant sensor, such as Hygro boards, and I'm working currently on the new firmware for the Hygro boards, you can use the values or soil humidity data from Home Assistant to trigger the water station. Add automation, start with empty automation, water the plant. We will be using numeric state, soil, moisture for let's say Ficus Benjamina. If it goes below 50, and it does happen, especially at my place, water station. This one will be turned on. Now you yourself have to decide how long the pump should work. Depending on the size of the pump, it can be 30 seconds or 5 minutes. I, for the test purposes, have installed the dripping system. That means that there is a small flow or just drips coming out of the tube. And I will put here 5 minutes. Device, wait. 
0, 0 hours, 0, 5 minutes, and 0, 0 seconds. Add action, water station, turn off water pump 1. And that's it. With this automation, which is very simple automation, if the humidity of the soil falls below 50% for the plant I'm monitoring, I want to start pump 1, which is providing power to that pot, and it will be running for 5 minutes. And this is how it should look. The water should be dripping slowly when the automation is activated. Depending on the size of the hose, and for these motors it has to be 3 mm, not 4 mm, believe me, I tried, it doesn't work. And also depending on what you have on the end of the hose itself, here as I said I'm using dripping system, so it only drips, it doesn't have continuous flow, you will be watering your plants. One thing that I definitely recommend, and please do it carefully, is put some kind of a failsafe. For example, standalone automations that would be triggered if the device is in an on state for a period longer than, let's say, 5 minutes. And this all depends on how long the longest automation you have for watering is. That way, you can prevent the leaks. Also, the device itself has a port that allows you to use it as a leak detector or as a water level detector, meaning it would turn off the pumps as soon as there is a short on that terminal. So you can play with that. Remember, a link to the original project is in the description of the video. And no, this is not once again my project, I just successfully managed to finish it. The original project from Jager can be found on the modcam.ru. And this is it for this Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Thinker. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on the Discord server. If you did like and enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up because it not just means a lot to me, but it also helps with the YouTube algorithms. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on my future video updates. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.